Hello everyone. Welcome to Muslim Law Lectures. I'm Marjina Sultana, an assistant professor from Interpersonal Law College, Greater Noida. In this lecture, we will discuss historical background of Islamic law. Before we study the cons Muslim conception of law, and it is important that we understand the pre-Islamic Arabia, that is the law or the customs that were prevalent prior to, to Islam. So let's start. This in the pre-Islamic Arabia, it is also known as Ayyam e Jahiliya. Okay. So during that time before Islam, there was no law. I mean, law had no existence before Muhammad, peace be upon him, became a prophet. And there was no law means there was no general law of the races inhibiting the Arabian penin Peninsula. There was no common law, no general law. Each tribe was governed by its own laws. And matters in dispute were either referred to the chief, the chief of the tribes they belonged to. So there was different in before Islam in in Saudi Arabia. There were different tribes, and each tribes had their own chief. So if any disputes were happened then they were referred to the chief and it was decided by an appeal to the sword. So the conduct of the Arabs was regulated by customs. Most of the customs of the Arabs people were barbarous and inhuman. So often the parents buried alive their female child. They used to bury the female child after they were born. So, and usury, uh, usury, that is uh, taking a high, very high interest on the debts. So, it was, usury was common. Gambling was rampant. It was days of superstition. And one important thing here is that idolatry was common before Islam in the Saudi Arabia. The position of women was not much better than that of animals because they had, they had no legal rights. In youth, there were the goods and the chattels of the father and after marriage, the husband became their lord and the master. Polygamy was universal. Divorce was easy and female infanticide was common. So, uh, one... You know, when we talk about women, during that time, if their stepmother, if their father is dead, and then their stepmother would, would be inherited by the son. So it was really a barbarous law, barbarous customs. So such was the condition of the Arabian society in which reforms were introduced by Islam to bring about a complete transformation of the society. The Arabs themselves were so much conscious of this change that they began to refer to the, to the period before Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the ayyam e jahiliya ayyam e jahiliya means the period of ignorance or rather wildness or savagery in contrast to the moral reasonableness of a civilized man. As a historical background, we have studied pre-Islamic Arabia. Now, let's study about the Prophet and the advent of Islam to understand how pre-Islamic customs were transformed and modified through revolution of Islam and to understand the teachings of Islam and Islamic legal system. 
The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born at Makkah in, five, uh, Makkah in 571 AD. The Prophet was a posthumous child, meaning that his, uh, his father Abdullah, Abdullah, see, uh, his father name is Abdullah. So, Ab Abdullah means uh, the servant of Allah. So, the word Allah means God in, uh, in uh, Arabic. So, so, the word Allah was not invented after the, uh, um, invented by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, this is the term term which means God. So Prophet Muhammad uh, much, uh, peace be upon him his father Abdullah was died at Medina before he was born while he was returning from Syria where he had gone for some business he died at Medina. So the Prophet was brought up by his mother Amina. On his mother's death, while he was only six years old, the Prophet passed into the care of his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. Two years later, the grandfather also died and the boy was then, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was brought up by his uncle, Abu Talib. After the, you know, when... During his youth, he was known as Al-Amin. Al-Amin means the faithful, trustworthy. He was known as trustworthy Al-Amin by the people of Arabs. So when the tribes, the people of Mecca were about to fight each other, he was sought out as an impartial arbitrator. Everyone trusted him and believed in him. At the, after the age of 25 years, he spent much of his time in a solitude, uh, solitude making a lonely cave named Hira. So the cave of, in the cave of Hira, the Hira, uh, cave of Hira became his abode. Where he, in, in the cave of Hira, he is set to have been occupied in prayer and meditation. He became a prophet at the 40th year of his age. At the age of 40, he became uh, of the prophet of Islam. At the age of 40, he received his first message from God. This is called Wahi. So he received his first Wahi at the age of 40. From that time, he devoted himself in replanting the only ancient religion according to the uh, Islamic perspective. From the Islamic, Islamic perspective, this religion was the only true and ancient religion professed by Adam, Noah, that is Nuh, alayhi salam, Abraham, Moses, Jesus and all the prophets of the past. In his endeavors to this end, he met with the most bitter persecution from the idolaters because as he is teaching to, he is asking the people to worship only one God, he is attacking the, you know, <clears throat> the faith of the people of the Arabia. So he was persecuted, he was abused, spat upon, covered with dust, and even dragged from the, the temple of Mecca by the hair of his head. But still he preserved, he assiduously preserved his undertaking. He ultimately succeeded in spreading his religion <clears throat> over a great portion of the Roman Empire to the people of Persia, to the Roman Empire, Persia, and in advancing his dominion to the banks of Indus and the Oxus. So, that's it. Flight from Mecca 
the Hijrat. Leaving Mecca for Medina is known as Hijrat. As a result of the Prophet's condemnation of the paganism, the, which was prevalent in Arabia, he was compelled to leave Mecca and to take refuge among his followers in, at Medina. The flight of Prophet, known as Hijrat, marks the beginning of Muslim era. Now, the years of humiliation, of persecution, of failures came to an end and the years of success, the fullest that has ever crowned one man's endeavors had begun. The Hijrat makes a clear division in the story of Prophet's mission, which is evident in the Quran. Till then, he had been a preacher only. So, he was the ruler of a state at first, a very small one, which later grew in 10 years to be the empire of Arabia. This absolute supremacy continued till his death in 632 AD. What is Islam? Islam means, in religious sense, submission to the will of God. And in secular sense, Islam means the establishment of peace. This, this word Islam occurs eight times in Holy Quran. In, uh, for example, in chapter number 3, verse number 17, it says, the religion with God is Islam. So according to Quran, the only true religion is a religion of God is Islam. And in another verse, uh, chapter number, uh, uh, another chapter number five, verse number three, it provides, today I have perfected your way of life. I have perfected your religion for you and completed my favor upon you and have chosen Islam as a way of life. What do we understand? What do we get from this verse? From this, it means it implies that the religion Islam is perfected. It is completed for those who believe. So, Islam has choose uh, this religion Islam is chosen for Muslims. So, Muslims are expected to follow Islamic law in every aspect of our life. So there is no limitation in Sharia or Islamic law and uh, there is no such an, an uh, aspect of life which is outside the domain of Sharia. So this religion is perfected, completed for Muslim and Muslim has to follow this this uh, uh, law, Islamic law, which is derived from Quran and the Sunnah. And uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said about Islam, purity of speech and hospitality. So, this honesty, purity of speech and kindness, this is part of our religion. And when he was asked, what is fate? He said, patience and the beneficence. So, patience means sabra. This is also a part of religion. It is worship of God, worship of Allah. And uh, when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked, what is the mark of faith? Then he replied, When the good work gives pleasure and the evil work grieves us, grieves, grieves the man, then that is a man of faith. So if we, if we 
take pleasure in good work and uh, we feel sadness in evil work then this is our mark of faith it means we believe in this religion it is the you know it indicates the religion of islam the part of islam let's uh, so this word islam is comprehensive one and does not express any association with any particular person people or country so the only object of this religion is to create a sense of obedience and submission to allah that is god so he, the ordinances of allah the god is to walk is to walk on the right path those who follow this path are muslims according to islam what is the significance of islam the root word assalam the word assalam from this word islam is formed it signifies to be to be tranquil tranquil at rest to have done one's duty to have paid up to be at perfect peace and finally to surrender oneself to him with whom peace is made so this word islam is derived from the word assalam so islam means peace greeting safety and salvation so conceptually islam does not only deal with what we would call ritual worship that is daily prayer uh, prayer alms giving uh, and the fasting pil pilgrimages etc but it also contains within it a set of ethics and the moral and to be honest so it talks about character being honest being upright being chivalry so these are all aspects that we derived that we derived from uh, uh, muslims derived from quran and the hadith teachings of islam prophet muhammad peace be upon him regarded religion as a strict natural law for man to follow wherein was no perplexity or ambiguity in islam all humanity is one vast brotherhood with one god as the, as the uh, their creator or master who looks them as equal it means that all all men are equal they are created equal they are equal before the god so all men are equal in islam and it it enjoins a duty to surrender to the will of god to surrender to the law of god it appears from the injunctions of quran and the uh, quran that islam has its existence since the beginning of the world and will exist till the day of resurrection from time to time according to islam from time to time this religion is corrupted the people forget the fundamental principles of the true faith and god in in his infinite mercy sends to them sends to the people a reformer a rasul or a messenger in order that he may show to the true path and warned them against the evil deeds thus adam abraham ismail moses and jesus were sent by god as rasuls so was muhammad peace be upon him as the last messenger of allah so the prophet muhammad told his, uh, told his people 
that excellence consisted only in deed. So this religion is the religion of works. So Islam above all is the religion of works. The service of man and the good of humanity constitute preeminently the service and the worship of God. From this we get that Islam is not all about only ritual worship. It, it also contains ethical and uh, uh, ethical and the moral code of behavior. It is a comprehensive code of behavior for Muslims to follow in private and in public life as well. So it we can uh, divide uh, you know the Sharia into three parts. One that deals with ritual worship, that is daily prayers, that is known as salah. Five daily prayers, alms giving, that is zakah, uh, zakat, that is giving uh, a share of uh, sh giving to the poor a share of what we have, a share of the wealth we have. And the third pilgrimage, that is hajj, uh, and uh, and fasting, that is so on. So it is not only about this uh, ritual worship. It is also about, it also contains uh, moral principles and the ethics that we have to follow. This is also part of religion. It, and the third part is uh, the law. We can say in modern sense, the law. So uh, ritual worship, ethics, that is moral code and the, and the law. So, that's it. Thank you for watching.